like to speak first to introduce the principal gardener and creative drive behind it, our little project. Um, that's Bronwyn. And just a little brief to put us in context with what the Rahmin Centre does. So we've got a very small but very highly productive market garden in Braidwood. So that includes chickens, a couple of sheep, a couple of pigs in rotation because we can't fit all those things at once. And we are in suburbia so we have to be mindful um, of our neighbours. We're sort of um, an acre block in a suburban setting uh, and we bought another quarter acre. But our productive land is about a thousand square metres under cultivation. We feed the soil, that's one of the key things. Uh, we manage its fertility with amendments, including microbes, with our own composts, with minerals, fertiliser and manure mixes, and we are going to share our um, intensive amendment uh, part one with you tonight. This is the one that we rely on the most. Because if you take a lot out of the soil, you, in, you cultivate intensively, you've got to put it all back and more some. Um, we grow garlic, which is... Uh, uh, a very sustainable crop. It has a tiny footprint, really. It's environmentally friendly. Friendly. It has a low impact on the earth. Um, it can be grown organically. Um, it's not thirsty and it's pretty hard wearing. Um, it's easily grown on a small commercial scale, so we're involved in that as well, which Bron will talk about. So I'll introduce Principal Gardener, Bronwyn Richards. Hi, everyone. Okay. So. As Helen said, our garden is quite small, so our entire block is, comes up to one, an acre and a half, so we're not even a hectare. We are located in the village of Braidwood, so we have a large suburban block in the village of Braidwood, which is how villages all were designed. They were designed so that you could produce some food for yourself in your own backyard, and essentially that's what we're doing except that we're producing food for more than just ourselves. We're producing a lot of food for our village as well. So um, uh, the block, we, uh, we moved there in 2002 and um, it's a 1970s, what I call brick venereal, you know, it's nothing fabulous, it's just a suburban house and... Um, but it's comfortable, which is always good, and it has a very large block. It has some well-established ornamental trees in the front garden and the back garden, and then beyond the back garden, we, we have baskets of vegetables. <laughs> so, um, so I've always grown a bit of food for, you know, you just go, oh yes, we'll have a little veggie garden. Um, so uh, I've raised a family, I, uh, I raised my family in the northern suburbs of Wollongong. We actually had a couple of acres there and I had dairy goats and grew food there as well. So it's not something new for me, I've been doing it for a long time. Um, I am a child, uh, a teenager of grassroots and earth garden um, and discovered those magazines when I was about 14 or 15 and went, oh my god. That's how life's meant to be. Oh, I've got to do this. So at uh, 50, I probably finally did it <laughs> in, in a way that I believe is really productive. Um, we've always dabbled as part of our, our life, but to do it seriously um, came much later. So I've always wanted to produce food. I've always wanted to produce food and for it to be consumed locally. For me, that seems to be the... Um, truest way of ensuring um, that you're getting good, clean, healthy food. So um, in 2006, Winland House was born um, and uh, I gave up one of my jobs, as you do in life. I sort of went, what am I doing this for? I can't quite remember anymore. Um, and Helen at that time was still working, so she was the farmer's wife supporting the farmer, as is often the case. And uh, we started, I had a vegetable garden, but at that point I wanted to grow for other people. 
And making that step to grow for other people is, in fact, actually quite a significant step. I, I was a little bit surprised at how significant I felt that was to be. So growing for yourself, growing for your friends, that's all fun. And, but suddenly you've got people who actually expect food from you regularly. We started out as a CSA, a community supported, supported agricultural project. There are lots of different forms of CSA, but primarily the main um, uh, overarching um, philosophy about CSA is that um, somebody is committed to supporting your agricultural endeavour. So we had uh, essentially six families who said that they would buy food off us every week and that they would buy what we produced. And that's how Winland House was born and how it was started.